Oceans. We're just waiting for everything to pop up. And once I can share it, we will get going. Let me know as you hop on where you're watching from. Just waiting for it to come on. There we go. There we go. So let me know where you're watching from. I'm just trying to deal with Facebook for a second. So once you hop on, let us know. Man, now it's going to all kinds of videos. I'm struggling this morning. So let me know who's on. Good morning, Nappy. I'm assuming that is Xavier Gomez. Come on, Facebook. You're being special. Let me know how your weekend was. South Carolina. Okay, it won't let me share it. It won't let me get on as myself. We'll try one more time. And if not, we're just gonna go for it. Come on, Facebook. You can do it. I believe in you. All right. Not gonna happen. All right. Thank you, Facebook. We love you. Appreciate your faithfulness. So let me know who's watching. I saw Mr. Hagen Sr. Mr. Gomez is watching. I see other people are watching. So just let me know where you're watching. This morning, We, like I said, we are getting in Miss Donna White. Good morning. In the title, we are getting into the parables. Paul and Patricia, love you guys. Sorry I let you down. Uh, Jeff Saniga, we are getting into the parables. Guten Morgen from Waterport. Thank you, Pastor Tim. We are getting into the parables of Jesus. So, I love starting on Mondays, but it's also hard because I don't want to teach too much and take up everything from the other guys. So, I had to pick one parable, and I am going to go in Luke 15. So, we are going to go to Luke 15. We are going to talk about the parable of the lost son, the parable of the prodigal son, or what I think it should be renamed as the parable of two sons, because there is a second son in there that kind of gets overlooked and we can actually get a pretty strong revelation from this other son if if we pay attention and see what's actually going on so let's go to luke 15 and i have two bibles here i have my new living my new king james because we're going to teach mostly good morning lady uh praying for stephen hope he's feeling better i'm going to teach mostly out of the new king james but i like the way it starts in the New Living. It says this. To illustrate the point further. So what I love about this is so many times people will pick a passage of scripture or they'll Google a scripture on whatever. And they just start right there. But right here, this shows us exactly what we have to do when we're studying the Bible. It says to prove or to illustrate the point further, which means there was something beforehand. So... To, do, to actually study this out, we have to go see what was before it. So right before it, we have the parable of the lost coin, the parable of the lost sheep. So we can see here that Jesus is saying, to illustrate how much I care about the lost, to illustrate how much I care about my people, to illustrate how much I love people, I'm going to tell you another story. 
So let's get into that story today. We're going to start in verse 11. So he says, Then he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided them to his livelihood. So here in the Jewish culture, it's a lot different to a lot of modern day cultures to where you would get your inheritance when a, when a parent passes away. Or maybe they set up a trust fund to where you get it over a certain period of time. But here a son could request it at any point in his life once he reached a certain age. So we have this one son that does exactly that. Verse 13, And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Prodigal just means wasteful, worldly. Uh, good morning, Ursula. Don't recognize your name, so let me know where you're from, how you found us. Thank you for hopping on. So he wasted all of his inheritance with prodigal, wasteful, sinful living. Verse 14, but when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine or lack. And in that land, and he began to be in want. So that's, that's exactly what the world does. The world system is set up for us to always want more. It's kind of keeping up with the Joneses, seeing everything that your neighbor has so you want to go get it. The whole whole system that forces both parents to work. We won't even get into all that. I'll stop right there. But verse 15. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed the swine. So what did this, this person do, this son do? He realized there was a lack. He realized there was a famine. He realized he was desperate. He realized he had to do something. So he basically sold his soul out and attached himself and became a slave to the world system. Verse 15, Then he went and joined himself, this is where we were, to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed the swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. So he wasted all of this money and wasted everything. And he was willing to eat the trash that the pigs were eating. So that, that shows us there, that there is a, a void or a lack that the world cannot fill. But what does the word, the word tells us in Psalms 37 that even in a famine, we shall have more than enough. Those that belong to God will have more than enough. Verse 17, but when he came to himself, and what I love about that is in another translation, it says when he came to his right mind. We all know that the word tells us that he has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. We also know that in, in when he encountered the man of the Gadarenes, the, the demon-possessed man that they called Legion, that you go through that story and then it says when he came to his right mind, he was fully clothed and sat there and could talk. So we see a big part here that says, when he came to his right mind, when we're operating under the world system, our mind is clouded. Our mind, there's interference in our mind, if you can say that. And, but when we come to our right mind, when we come to our senses, we, we realize that there is a loving father. And look, let's look and see what he says after he came to his right mind. When he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and despair and I perish with hunger with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. So we see here that, again, we go back to the beginning. To, to illustrate my point further, he is talking about the lost. So see how we have this encounter where this lost son, this person that had a relationship with the father but then walked away. Now he's saying, I need to go back to my father. And let's watch how the father responds. 19, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Well, isn't that just like the devil? Isn't that just like the world? That, oh, you've sinned too much. You've messed up too much. You are not worthy of salvation. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But listen to this. 
But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him, had compassion on him, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The father desires for everyone to be saved. He desires to have that relationship with every one of us. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, another thing we see right here is true repentance. True repentance. And the father accepted him. Bring out the best robe and put it on him. Bring out a ring. A ring is a symbol of authority. A robe is a symbol of royalty. And, on, and sandals on his feet, which is a, you go back to the, the whole armor of God or go forward to the whole armor of God and you see that the sandals represent salvation. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. The Bible says that he desires all men shall be saved. He also says that Heaven rejoices over the salvation of one sinner coming back to repentance. So when we say heaven's throwing a party just for you because you repented, because you came back, or maybe you've never known the Lord, and you give your life to the Lord, all of heaven throws a party. They bring out the best meat. They begin to get merry. Verse 25, now this, this is the part I really like. Because my life, my testimony got compared to the prodigal son. But I would almost say I was kind of like this other son, the older son. So let's see what happens with this older son. Now his older son was in the field. And he came and drew near to the house. He heard the music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your, your brother has come home because he, he has received him safe and sound. Your father has killed the fatted calf. Here we go, the fun part. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, this is, this is the part where I really got a revelation. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. So here we have this son that was with him the whole time. And if we don't get the revelation of what I'm about to say here, then that's what leads us into becoming the other son. Is we have to get the revelation that all that the Lord has is ours. That if this son had gotten that revelation, that he would be happy with the father. That if he had known the revelation or had the revelation that everything that the father had belonged to him, the robe, the ring, the sandals, the fatted calf, the young goats, all of it already belonged to him. All he had to do was ask. So many of us are walking through Christianity, walking through our relationship with the Lord, seeing the promises in the word, and we're complaining that we don't have them. Instead of using our revelation, realizing that we already have them, claiming them in faith, and receiving them in faith, and declaring the goodness of God, and walking in the fullness of God. Verse 32, it was right. We should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. Good morning, Dinley, Lisa, Paula. We just talked about... The prodigal of the two sons, as I like to call it, because there are two sons, and you can get a great revelation from both of them. You get a revelation of the father's love, the father's compassion, but you also get a revelation from the older son of that if we don't have a revelation of what the word tells us belongs to us, then we can walk through life in our Christianity being bitter at other Christians because of what they're getting. You know, I've never said this publicly, but I've had certain people ask me, well, why Why am I not getting healed? Why am I not getting this? Why am I not getting this? And look, I can't answer for every one of those things. I don't know why some people get healed and some others don't. I've only had the Lord tell me about one person that wouldn't receive their healing. 
and they had already been healed twice from the same thing. And I heard the Lord clear as day said, they will not receive their healing this time because they have bitterness. They won't let go of their bitterness and their bitterness allows an open door for their heal or for their for their sickness. We cannot be the older son and walk through life without a revelation that what we have, what the what the word tells us we have already belongs to us. We have to be humble. We have to get the revelation of the word and know what it says for us. That's what I, I love about another verse in the in the Gospels that says, He who hears, more understanding will come. The more we listen to the word, the more understanding we get. So I hope that gave you some revelation this morning. I hope that was a good way to start your morning off. We love you guys. Thank you so much for always hopping on. If you have not already partnered with us, please do so. You can do so at saltshaker513.com. We are trying to kick off some great things. Hopefully we can get everything rolling by January. Uh, I just saw some stuff opening up in South Africa, so hopefully we can get that soup kitchen back up and going. And also we may be starting another one in South Africa, hopefully one in Colombia, and maybe somewhere else. We have a meeting with some people next month to try to get something else going. So partner with us. Help us carry the gospel all around the world. Also help us feed the hungry and uh, nations of the world. We love you guys so much. You can also partner with us on Cash App, dollar sign 513, Salt Shaker, Zelle, which is one of the easiest ways. I know we've got quite a few people that do Zelle. You can just literally type in our email address, the Salt Shaker 513 at gmail.com, and that goes directly into the account. We've also got some exciting new surprises coming for you soon. Uh, I think we're going to do some more giveaway shirts here soon that are pretty cool. Um, we're also going to be designing some shirts, or we're in the process of designing some shirts and hats for you guys to buy if you like to do that. They're pretty cool. We're really excited about those as well. We love you guys. Thank you so much.